All right, so we're now ready to do some basic phonetic transcription. There's a few things to remember when you're transcribing words from English. The first of which has to do with the fact that you need to forget everything you know about the English writing system. English writing system is fraught with inconsistencies from the sound to the symbol. There's never a one-to-one -one correspondence, very rarely. So it's just because the writing system is sort of a holdover or a hangover really from old English. That's one of the values of using an international phonetic alphabet. You get that one-to-one -one correspondence between sound and symbol. Another thing to remember is pay attention to the sounds that you're actually hearing, whether in your own speech or the sound of somebody else. Rely on what your ear tells you, not what your memory tells you based on how the word is written in English or any other language. The third thing to remember is that anytime you're doing transcription, you want to enclose your transcription in square brackets. That is what linguists use to say this is what was actually spoken. All right. So, we've got a few words as they're written here in English. We've got a few words here in English as they're transcribed through the International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, let's take a few examples. So, toe. Throughout this part of the video, feel free to pause and see if you can guess what the transcription would be based on how I say this. You could also do this based on how you say it, but because I'm doing the video and we can't interact, um, you know, we have to kind of go off on my speech for now. So, toe. Ho. What sounds are in there? The first sound you might identify as T. But what's that vowel sound? It's tricky. O. Oh. Is that enough? Probably not, because that would just be the monophthong. So that would just be to. You could say that and probably be well understood, but as I said it, to. That vowel is a diphthong. Toe. What about this next word? Bash. Remember, put the brackets first. Bash. Well, we have a b first, and then how do we represent that a ah sound? With the ash symbol, if you can remember that. Bah. But then we have ba. We have one more sound here. Shh. Remember, in English, we tend to write that with two letters. That's not what we do in the IPA system, though. We actually write it with this elongated s. Shh. Bash. Wham. It's another tricky one, but don't be deceived into thinking that W and H is two sounds. We're just talking about one sound here. W. So that's a straightforward W. Ah. Well, we just had that one. And then M. Wham. Brilliant. What about this one? Calf. This is exactly what I'm talking about with the problems of the English writing system. It really epitomizes all of the inconsistencies in four letters. K. Starts with a K. Calf. It's that vowel again. Keeps popping up. Ka. Is there an ul? Some people could say calf. Maybe you'll be understood, but calf, as a lot of people pronounce it, and I think most native speakers pronounce it, probably just ending in an F. Calf. Next we have hook. So we have our voiceless glottal fricative. Then we have uh. You remember that one? Uh, uh. It's the upside down omega symbol, or this one, huh. And then we have k, hook. Let's take one more. We have mouth. Common thing among linguists. So we have m, mow, ow, ow. You could just tell by the lip rounding. It's a dynamic kind of vowel. It's a diphthong. So we have ow, like in house, mow, mow. And then we have th, th. That is the voiceless dental or interdental fricative, mouth. So let's take the opposite exercise where we have words from English uh, that are transcribed into the International Phonetic Alphabet already, but we need to figure out what word they are. So just like when you're transcribing, sound them out. Relax. We'll get through this. So we have uh, j. No, we don't. Remember, that actually represents the y sound. So we have y. This uh, vowel is e, so we have y. Then we have an o, yell, yell, any guesses? Yellow. 
What about this next one? This might be deceiving too, but see if you could sound it out. So we have this sound that's often used with that tie bar over the top. A t and a sh next to each other. When they love each other very much, these two sounds often produce a affricate. So you get ch. And then you get that sound. Remember, it's often represented like this in some textbooks. But get used to using this one, an upside down R. So that's ch. And then what do we have here? What vowel is that? That's e. So we have tree. Tree. Hmm. Maybe it seems weird when you're exaggerating it, but it's tree. Anytime you're saying this word, if you're a native speaker of English, you're probably producing that. Tree. So what about this one? Well, we have ul. Great. What's that vowel sound? Remember what that wedge character signifies? It's basically uh in a stressed position. Uh. So that would be with the v, love. Let's take one more. So we have ul again. What's this sound here? We've got two vowels next to one another. And it's probably a diphthong. So it's a. So we have lay. Ends in a k, lake, lake. So there you go. Again, this is very basic, broad phonetic transcription. We're just capturing the very general sounds that are used here. But it's just this type of practice that you could do on your own or with your friends to get even better and more confident at phonetic transcription. So, what do we talk about in this video? We talked about the system that linguists use to describe consonant sounds, voicing, place of articulation, manner of articulation. We talked about how linguists use uh, vowels in a different set of criteria, height, backness, and rounding. And we talked a bit about the International Phonetic Alphabet Chart for consonants and for vowels. And then we just did some phonetic practice, some phonetic transcription practice. I hope you found this video useful. Um, stay tuned for more to come. Thank you.